I thought this was appropriate. I thought this getup was appropriate for this video. Um, got my Superman shirt on. Not very sure, Shank, but you know, Superman gives us hope, and that's what this movie's all about. Just thought of that now. Perfect segue. Anyway, Shawshank Redemption. Let's go. So Shawshank Redemption came out in either 1994 or five. I've seen both of them online, but came out in one of those years, and it was directed by Frank Darabont, and it stars Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman as Andy Dufresne and Red. And, um, good God, this this film is rated IMDb's top film of all time. And I, I easily see why. So the basic plot of this film is Andy Dufresne, played by Tim Robbins, gets put into prison because he finds his wife with a new lover, so he apparently kills them both. And then he gets put into Shawshank and meets Red, played by Morgan Freeman, and they form a bond over the course of 19 years, I think it is, in the film. And um, that's that's all it is. But it's the perfect example of that a fantastic story can carry an entire movie. Because normally, I tend to go for like the action stuff, like the old action 80s, and it's fun, stupid fun. But this didn't really have any of that. And that's fine, because it's... It's great. Like, it's just perfectly told the entire way through. I'm not going to do a full play-by-play -play of this because it, there's a lot to unpackage. It's like a two and a half hour movie. But there's multiple moments that stood out to me. And I'm, I'm going to touch on them briefly because they, they have to be talked about. Obviously, spoilers, but this film's old at this point. So, you know, you have your warning. First off, I want to touch on the pacing of this film. Despite the fact it's really long. Thinking back on it, I can't think of anything that should be taken out. Like, it all fits. It all has its place. The parts that are just s slow, I guess, they need to be there because it kind of builds character and shows these humans as human and not just 2D characters that you don't care about. And because of that, it really shines through and you start to care for these characters so much so that when the ending rolls around and... I will get to that soon. But when it rolls around, you're like, oh my god, good. You are so happy for what's happened to these characters. The acting in this film is just top-notch. Every single character has their own traits and personality. And they just, they feel like actual human beings, which is just good. It's good. That's what you want to watch. You want to watch human beings stuck in this shit situation and get through it. And they do. Tim Robbins, as Andy, is just... Stand out, obviously, he's the main one. Morgan Freeman is red, also stand out, although I've seen Morgan Freeman in a lot of things, so it's just like, oh, he's doing his thing at this point. Tim Robbins, I don't think I've seen in many things, so him, 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 I had a bit more of a hired thing for. By that, I mean I got a taste for his acting talent a bit more than I would for Morgan Freeman, because I kind of lost track of that last sentence, but. You know what I mean. This film does a fantastic job of making you root for the good guys and absolutely despise the bad guys because they are fucking awful. Tom Clancy is like the main go-to, not warden, he's like the security guard, that's the one. I forgot his character's name, but he is an absolute fucking dick the entire way through and you just want to smack him in the face and that's perfect because he's meant to be the bad guy, the one you're like, oh yeah, fuck that guy. I don't like him. The warden as well, he like starts seeming like an okay guy. Like, oh yeah, um, I'll give you this. I'll let you do this. And uh, oh, you can help me with these taxes and stuff like that. And then before you know it, he's like, wait, you're in the hole now. And uh, I can literally ruin your life if you don't do as I say. So he goes from being slightly good to just full on absolute prick in like no time at all. It's the perfect balance of just good and evil like, the prison world is no fairy tale place. I don't know if they say that in this movie. I've heard it somewhere, but it's definitely true because the bad guys in here are the people who run it. The awful people who have the power to do whatever they want because the rest of the society doesn't care around them. So they can use these people as their playthings and beat the shit out of them. Clancy Brown's character, I think it's Hadley. Sorry if I'm wrong. I think it's Hadley, but he literally, on one guy's first night, beats him so bad that he dies and nobody's gonna say anything about that and that's just that's wrong to be honest i cannot actually remember the soundtrack to this film i imagine it would have gone with it that well that i didn't even notice which is the sign of a good soundtrack but also 
when anything was happening, I was just glued to it at all times. And I was mostly trying to listen to what they were saying because the smallest bit of dialogue could lead to something massive later on. But apart from the fantastic pacing and the fantastic acting, it's there's a lot of scenes that I want to point out. Just the odd one here and there. There's one of them when this new guy, Tommy, turns up after they've been there for a while. And he knows, he finds out that the, his old cellmate killed Andy's wife. And of course, Andy's been put in there for it. So he tells Andy and Red. And then he goes and tells the warden as well. No, Andy tells the warden, sorry. And then the warden takes him to one side. He's like, right, I need you to confirm that what you are saying is 100% true. And when he says yes, Tom Clancy's character just fucking snipes him and kills him in the middle of this prison courtyard. And then they use this excuse of, oh yeah, he tried to run. So we had to shoot him. Like, you absolute fucking dickhead. Like, you did not have to do that. That just shows the warden is a massive prick. Andy actually ends up getting like bullied and attacked multiple times by the gang who they call the sisters. And eventually, after he does something nice for them, like he gets them all beers by offering to do the tax thing. And at the same time, they kind of like ease off him and slow down a bit. But of course, it finds out later on that he's been doing that for a very long time. Or that his, that's his plan. And he's planning to do that, which then leads to him like getting getting out because what Andy does is he's basically got this plan and he speaks to Red about it and he says like right there's this person I've been doing the warden's taxes for this long but all the money is coming from somewhere and there's some shady dealings going on here but I've done this and I've kind of rooted it to this person who doesn't exist so that when the warden actually does his thing he will end up getting caught and it will be then traced to someone who is a figment of my imagination as he says something like that and I was like, okay, that's very clever. What you find out is later on when he's doing the taxes for all these guards and he's doing it for the warden because it's a tough time, he actually swaps them around and he does it so the warden gets arrested. And I think Tom Clancy's character, I think his name's Hadley. I'm going to look this up. Yes, it's Captain Hadley. I was right. I've been saying it all along. I've actually got a list of the actors here because there's one particular actor that I want to touch on who wasn't in the film for long, but did a fantastic job and has left a big impact on well i say on me on my partner watching it because uh, she cried quite a lot when this particular thing happened if you've seen the film you know what i'm talking about james whitmore as brooks he's this old man who's been in prison for 50 years he runs the library andy obviously comes in to help him they become friends and then he gets released and it's heartbreaking he even tries to kill one of the other inmates who's his friend because he wants to stay in there because all he's known is being in prison. 50 years he's been in there. That's an entire lifetime and he's made a name for himself. He's just the basic librarian, but he's got something. That's his thing. And of course he's going to get released. So he's got nothing and he tries it on the outside and doesn't like it. There's a lot of scenes that play out while he's like monologuing this letter that he sends to Andy and it shows him like at a supermarket bagging things and he's not happy. It shows him in this apartment and he's just, he doesn't know what to do with himself and he absolutely hates it. So he ends up hanging himself in the room that they've provided for him. And it's just along with the dialogue at the same time, like I'm, I'm getting emotional talking about this now, but along with the dialogue at the same time, it's just, it's heartbreaking and it actually, I normally don't feel things when it comes to movies, but this hit me a bit more than I probably should have. It's a very emotional scene, and it's, it's perfect for the film. It shows what the prison life can do to a man, and it's um, horrifying. One of the last scenes, there's a few scenes in this film, obviously, that I just stand out, but one of the last scenes I want to touch on is the time when they all do the roll call, and they say that Andy asked for a piece of rope from this guy, and he's like, oh yeah, I'll give it to him. So they think that he's going to do the same thing as Brooks did. But instead, he he doesn't. And you find that out the next morning when roll call happens and he doesn't come out of his cell. The warden goes in there to have a look and he's like, oh yeah, don't fuck these, these rock statues and all this. Fuck this poster. And he throws it at the poster and it goes through it. And he pokes his finger through, takes it down and then sees a gigantic tunnel that Andy has been digging for 19 years with a tiny rock hammer and it's, it's, it's such a good scene because you see him crawling through like piss and shit in a sewer 
and he's timing the bangs for the pipe at the same time as the lightning strikes or the thunder sorry so of course it masks it and then he crawls through falls in the river and does that classic pose where he looks up and it's raining and he just like puts his arms up and he's he's free and when that happened i'm like good for you andy good for you all that money that he's been funneling under that fake name all this time, he then goes and claims it as that person because he's been signing the things, he's been signing all the checks, and he knows that's him now. So he's got all this money that he's stolen from the warden over a massive, long, long playing game, and then he moves country. And I, I think it's Mexico he says he goes to, but he's, he's, he's free. Changed his name. No one's going to look for him because the warden's been arrested. There you go. He's now got his life back. He's also left a letter behind for Red when he comes out and asks him to go and meet him. And the last scene in the film is Red going, finding Andy, and they're both on this beach, and they both just give each other a hug, and it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful scene. And then the credits roll, and I was just there like, this, this is perfect. This is... I can easily see why this is IMDb's top-rated film ever. I can't really think of anything else to say for this film. I've praised it so much in this video. So it's I, I can't think of anything else to say. It's just, it's perfect. Go and watch it. There's not a single thing in this film that doesn't belong there. Yes, it's a long film, but if you take any scene out, it will take away from the experience. And you don't want that because this literally shows humans and humanity. And they bond over just, as the description calls it, common decency. And that's what it is. It's just two guys who become friends and it's perfect so of course there's no doubt what i'm gonna rate this movie i would say shawshank redemption is a cinematic masterpiece it was so good that when it was over my partner said this is my new favorite film so that's good but then again she's seen a lot of shit so didn't really have a high bar but still it's it's brilliant Go and watch it. You'll love it. But The Shawshank Redemption, have you seen it? If you have, leave a comment. Let me know. Let's talk about it. Although it makes me emotional to talk about this film because it's just fantastic. But either way, leave a comment. Let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I have nothing left to say about this film. It, you just, you have to experience it. You have to go and watch it. But thank you for watching me. Thank you for watching this video. And I will hopefully see you guys next time. Ooh. Um, from a strenuous activity. He's uncomfortable because he's been injured from a fight. He's sad because he doesn't like conflict or arguments. <laughs> Papi just beat the shit out of an old man. <laughs> Papi, you, you savage bastard. You just beat up an old Pepe. Wi-Fi, I oh. you could lose, true.